Should you give someone the benefit of the doubt to supersize your business? Sharon Hornell's from here. And our contribution related idiom or expression today to coincide with the BU 365 day challenge is to give someone the benefit of the doubt. Now this is an English American legal term that became popular in the 1700s, but it was first used in the Irish treason trials in 1798. And basically the definition stated that if the jury entertains a reasonable doubt upon the testimony of witnesses, then they are bound to acquit or let the person off the hook or consider them innocent, innocent until proven guilty, right? Well, what does this have to do with building and growing and supersizing our businesses? There is risk and reward inherent in every choice, every decision, every activity that we undertake, right? Starting a business is risky, but there's also great upside rewards if we're willing to take those risks. Now, early on, the younger I was, when I was younger, I guess I would say, I trusted pretty much everybody. Uh, call it naive, call it growing up in, in the Midwest and just believing that everybody is good people and that everybody wants to make the world a better place. And it was through some really bad, really painful experiences that I learned that Everybody doesn't deserve our trust. Everybody uh, doesn't deserve the benefit of the doubt. Now, uh, I learned that through some bad partnerships, a not so hot marriage, through um, trusting people, vendors, suppliers, uh, people I was negotiating with, and realizing after getting stung and burned that uh, everybody doesn't come to the table with the same morals, values, beliefs about ethics that I do and that that's okay but I have to realize that they don't and if they're coming at it with a different intent than I am then I have to be aware of that it um, helped me to learn that the more we love and care about someone the more we give them the benefit of the doubt uh, the more we unconditionally love someone the more we give them the benefit of the doubt even if they might be behaving in ways that are human but not so positive human so my my tack these days, my strategy these days is to always do my research, always do due diligence on anybody I'm going to get involved with in business, anybody I'm going to have relationships with. And nowadays with the internet, it's so easy to research. And is all the information there? Can we still make a mistake? Yes, because some people are very good at uh, creating false personas or creating false information and putting it out in the world for everyone to find. So we always need to listen to our instinct and our gut. I've learned that over the years, if I don't listen to my head, my heart, and my intuition, and do my research and due diligence, I might be making a mistake. Because sometimes people are so charismatic, and I love this because my dad always said he never met a con man he didn't like, but he'd come across a lot of con men throughout his lifetime, and of course he never got involved with them because he listened to his intuition and said, yeah, something's off about this guy. He's very charismatic. I really like him. He's saying all the right things and doing all the right things, yet there's just some little inkling. And my biggest story about that is a gentleman by the name of, of Tom Petters, who is from our area, and uh, I, I knew him, and I thought he was very charismatic. My dad knew him, thought he was very charismatic. He tried to get my dad in business with him, but my dad was like, mm, something's wrong. And lo and behold, a few years later, he was... Uh, arrested and put in jail for a huge Ponzi scheme, one of the biggest Ponzi schemes at the time. So we need to do our due diligence. We need to listen to our gut as well as uh, our, our doing our research because sometimes everything looks good on paper. I've hired people that looked really good on paper. I've partnered up with people that looked really good on paper, did my due diligence, did my research, but had this weird feeling that there was just something not right, and whether it would be a, a values mismatch, a core values mismatch, or an ethics mismatch. Those are the most painful ones. Core values and ethics mismatches are the most painful for me. Maybe not for you, but they are for me, especially when it comes to business, because like, I still choose to believe that everybody I do business with wants to make the world a better place. Uh, and sometimes I help people that don't want to make the world a better place, but they've always done a really, really good job of covering that up in, in the first place where I wouldn't have gotten involved with them. All right, love to know your experience with this particular idiom or expression, give someone the benefit of the doubt. I tend to get, still give people the benefit of the doubt 
until they do something or prove me wrong or prove that they don't deserve the benefit of the doubt, right? I think we do that with the people that we interact with every day and that if we treat people the way we want to be treated, uh, we probably won't run into a problem at least not as often as if we didn't treat people the way we want to be treated. All right, have an awesome day. If I can help you anyway, ask. Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow with another contribution-related idiom for the month of July. Have an awesome day.